I've always been fascinated by these butane lighters, especially, you know, starting as a teenage boy, playing with fire is fun, all right? But um, it can be frustrating. And these, once you get it right, then you can use this for uh, certain soldering functions, for cooking functions, and loads of other stuff. The reason I thought to make this video today was because of or we have got emergency situations down in Florida there with the hurricane and uh, who knows for someone it might help that one day in a certain moment to uh, quickly heat something up or have the lighter that they want to skip to the end of this video then I'll just tell you the answer uh, right away you're gonna turn both items upside down in most cases you're going to press that and it's okay if you hear a little bit of pss, but you want to make sure it's generally sealed and then also you might have to do it twice because this will cool down. And if uh, this item cools down, you can warm it back up and it will flow the rest of the way. Now for the rest of the explanation, if you wanna know about the physics. Refilling them was just like a very hit and miss, seems random. Um, I slowed down, put the full power of my thermodynamics brain behind it, and then I tinkered something that was delayed for a long time because you don't want to tinker with uh, compressed flammable stuff, right? So either I was not smart for a long time or we all probably uh, could use this little lesson, how to make these things refill easily, cheaply, safely, etc. I'm sure there's a lot of instructions online uh, or videos of people showing you how to do this, tips and tricks, but I'm going to try to take the angle of thermodynamics based on the fundamentals, what's going on, and then you can develop your tips and tricks for your own you know, devices. They both have this one little nipple down at the bottom. There'll be an instruction that says open all the way or close all the way this uh, control valve first, and then go ahead and fill it. And there'll be some instructions on here, but between all those, that just didn't cut it. So I was thinking like, does this thing not fit quite right? And I could always hear the little when I got done. Oh, a little bit sprayed out. How much was that? Was that like all the mount that was supposed to go in there? And oh, no, it seems like it was filled. Oh, but it's not anymore. All right, so step one. This is a psychrometrics problem. That means uh, at what pressures and temperatures are the fluids a liquid or a gas? And this is both. You can hear both, you can hear the liquid shaking around, but there's only one chemical in here. It's the butane, and it is both a liquid and a gas at the same time. So this is called supercritical. It's under pressure, enough pressure to form a liquid, but it's still not all liquid because there's not enough mass of the fluid in there there is not enough mass of butane in the canister to occupy the entire space in its liquid form because the liquid is so much more dense than, than gas. And then whichever uh, volume is remaining after you know the liquid has been poured in, a little bit of butane on the surface of that fluid will then vaporize and occupy that top space. The exact same thing is gonna happen right here in this syringe. If I fill it up with a little bit of water and no air and cap it off, and then I pull the syringe so there's more space at the top. Well, that wasn't sealed, but pretend it was. Then what is there up in the top area? It's not air. It's just a little bit of these water molecules that have expanded and there will be some water vapor up there in the top. Okay, so this fluid is in the supercritical phase, which makes it sound even more dangerous than it is. Um, this canister and all of the canisters, when, when you first buy it and when it's almost empty, it is just around two bar, two times the pressure of the atmosphere. That's 14.7 PSI, so it's not crazy high pressures, the same as a probably the olive oil spray bottle in your kitchen. Um, all right, and at two bar, it is going to compress into a liquid, but the vapors remaining at the top instead of just being air, that's also 
the vaporized um, butane. Okay, so if we want to fill this thing, uh, this has the same condition inside of it. Above that liquid level, that's also the butane gas. And as soon as it goes through any nozzle and reaches the atmospheric pressure, that's like right here, it's going to be gas before you, um, before you ever see the liquid come out. And um, if you were to basically try to spray this in there without making full contact on a seal, then it would all come out as gas as it goes. Um, if you punctured this very quickly, some of it would puddle here and then boil off in a few seconds. Um, okay, so step one, you want the liquid to be available at the nozzle when you're refilling so that the pressure in this can pushes the fluid that is the liquid part, not the gas part. And then uh, you want to be connected and sealed as good as you can, but it doesn't take a ton of force. Even if this was just uh, pressed up against my thumb, then uh, 30 pounds per square inch doesn't require, it's less, less than a pound to push that up against there and be higher pressure on your seal than the pressure of the gas that wants to escape. Okay, so um, in the end of the days, these come with different nozzles and you gotta get it close, but it doesn't have to be super precise. And um, uh, all right, so then we've got these two, because of the properties of butane, they're both at the same pressure. So how in the world is it going to fill at all? Well, that, that's the thing. That's the reason sometimes it just doesn't fill at all when you try it out. So they're assuming that you've used it a little bit. Okay, so as soon as I got done releasing some pressure, it's a little bit less than its um, equilibrium. So there's a little bit lower pressure in here. And now this one's ready to, let's say we're, where were we? We were, uh, well, near the max. I'll just, how's this one doing? That one's near the max too. I was filling these. Okay, but you can see somewhere around the half. And then I'm gonna turn it upside down. If my valve's in an acceptable position, then I'll get some flowing. All right, so I'm not compressing the valve. There's a little valve, a spring-based valve on this thing. Once I press it, that's when it'll allow the liquid to flow. And then we're gonna see if we can hear it. Okay, so it was a little bit stuck, so probably that plastic conical shape gripped on there. All right, but we were hearing it like escape a little bit, like we have no idea if it was effective. That's, that throws you off, hard to follow. Oh, but here we are. We filled up the liquid all the way. That's wonderful. Okay, so if this was um, very close to empty, then we might fill it for two seconds or three seconds, and then it just stops flowing. All right, so at that point, you have this fluid uh, driving into reservoir number two, and it would be um, expanding and cooling. So now reservoir two is fairly cool. This bottle has cooled, but just a tiny bit compared to its full size. Uh, the temperature won't drop by much. Okay, and then this, let's say you've got to go for round two because they'll reach an equilibrium, so you're going to plug it in, flow three seconds, and then it just doesn't flow anymore. Okay, you don't hear anything, so you unplug, but you're only halfway full. But by that time, your hand was like warming this up. And the more, uh, if this is just slightly above room temperature and slightly above the temperature of this canister, it does not, nothing wants to flow into here. So, you you want to let this go ahead and cool down before you begin, and then the pressure of this entire canister will be slightly less than this one. Um, and then that might be a reason why it takes two cycles to recharge. Uh, boy, if this isn't hard enough, then if you didn't have a window, that's trouble. But you can weigh it. You can shake it around and you can hear it. Uh, not on the camera. So this is a good analogy of the two canisters, the two containers that are connected when the valve is pushed. You have an open path, but it's narrow. And then you have some liquid at the top. You want that liquid to be um, down, like 
at the base where it's going to exit. And you also want this liquid to be at the bottom, but that naturally happens. Um, you won't have much success if you try to fill this upright, unless the can is designed with a, with a long straw inside. Well, you can read the can and get that to figure out. Okay, so that, I mean, just the gravity should be able to show you what orientation to put your stuff and to get it to fill. Um, and then also, finally, temperature-wise, I'll try and recap uh, as this fluid exits down there and this volume gets bigger, that cools a little bit. And this one, um, well, it also will cool if the some amount of that gas is expanding. The gas that was a liquid here enters here and some of it expands. So this might cool. Everything could cool. And then finally, if things, um, if there's any temperature deviations that can interrupt your process, but you can always kind of pause and reset. Uh, you can also put both your hands on this canister and warm it back up. If this canister was much smaller, so here's two other fuel canisters, um, and this one's only the same size as some of the lighters. So this one definitely, as the fluid's exiting, it's going to cool down. And then just, you know, put both your hands on there. Let it get warm, warmer than, you know, the table, the ambient, and then it'll be ready to uh, pour again into a, this other canister that is also under pressure. So they're both under pressure. Um, so warming things up raises the pressure a little, cooling them down lowers the pressure a little, and your nozzles, I think that you, if you treat it just like an air, um, like filling up uh, something with an air pump, such as a, a, an inflatable ball or in um, those air mattresses, you just need the nozzle to be generally contacting all around and generally sealed. And if a little bit is leaking out while you're doing your job, it's okay. Uh, just do this in a well-ventilated area and follow all the safety precautions. And that was a crazy long explanation, but it, it actually is really important because if you can totally understand this phenomenon, then you also understand about propane and other uh, compressed fluids and like it connects into everything when we get into pneumatics and condensation and water and rust and, and so forth. So that was a unreasonably long video about one little topic, but hey, maybe you'll, uh, some of you will just like, have this solved for the rest of your life.